Alrighty, here we have the third round of the February 2014th Netrunner Tournament at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York. I only have game one of this round recorded. I actually have a lot of game two recorded, but for some reason my camera uh, cut out. Um, so that entire game is not recorded, so I'm only going to post the first game. And then at the end of the video, I'll just tell you what happened in the second game. Anyway, that's me... On the left, playing Kate, and on the right, Elad, also known on Board Game Geek as Irian Klaus, I guess, however you pronounce his name, <laughs> his internet name. Um, he's been playing Netrunner forever. He's sort of like a uh, you know, top. I, mean, I don't know if he's the best player in the New York community, but he sort of runs the New York community. You know, he organizes the meetup and and takes care of everything for us. Uh, he's a great guy. Everyone likes him. He likes everybody. He's super fun to play with. And he is coming into this round 4-0. and I'm coming into the round 3-1. and uh, There's a player named Tom who's sitting behind me who's, pl uh, who's playing against Chris, who I faced in the first round. Tom is 3-1, and and I'm 3-1. and So for me to win this tournament, I have to win both these games, and Tom probably has to lose one of his. Uh, if Elad here wins, I think, one of these games, then Tom would have to win both of his games to have a chance. And if Elad wins both these games, well, he's, he goes undefeated on the day and wins no contest. So, looking for two wins here and to have a chance at taking home the bacon. The bacon, actually, uh, sh you should know, is the... 20-sided store does something pretty cool for the Netrunner tournaments. The entry fee is 5 bucks, and they take all the entry fees, they turn them into store credit, and they distribute it amongst the top uh, players in the tournament. So it's sort of like if 10 people show up, that's 50 bucks. So it's it turn basically it's they just sold 50 bucks in merchandise, right? So the only the money they get is not the entire entry fee, but the profit. It's like we all went and bought a $50 board game. They take the profit from a board game sale, um, you know, and we share it, which is it's pretty cool. All right, it looks like this game is about to get started. Remember, if you have any uh, questions about, you know, oh, are we mulliganing? <laughs> if you have any questions about the tokens we're using or the cards or my deck lists, it's all in the YouTube description. It's probably in the YouTube description of other videos. All these questions have been answered somewhere. Don't ask the same question again that has been asked 10,000 times. Um, right? Look, look it up. Use Google. That's, that's you know what the key to being good at Netrunner is? Is being able to figure things out on your own. <laughs> no one's going to hold your hand in the tournament, right? And tell you what the answer is. You're going to have to Google it. Uh, yeah. So... You know, if you've watched the previous rounds, uh, I'm playing Kate Parasite Recursion plus Tutors for, I guess, uh, escape hatches, right? Like Femme and uh, Otman. Just lots of data sucker abuse, basically. Uh, Elad, he's playing a Jinteki. He's won two games with it today. Uh, hasn't been beaten today, so I'm going worried. I'm basically expecting to die. Uh, but I know that when people die to a Jinteki, it's going to be some sort of neural EMP or Counter-Strike or Scorched Earth situation. So I'm looking for my Plaskreets, and I'm looking to keep my hand full uh, every single turn. Alright, let this game finally begin! Hedge Fund. Install... Install. Thank you for leaving R&D open. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Can I have some more data sucker tokens? Run R&D. Take that. Two points. Easy. Taking net damage. Don't care. Oh, I kind of wanted that daily cast. And he's like, well, why didn't you just install it before running? Well, because I have another one. <laughs> um, you know, if I install and I want to have more cards in my hand when I run, that could have been a snare. It could have been, right? Uh, so, 
Yeah, draw. <laughs> draw with my last click. Do not die. I'm really worried about not dying. I'm pretty sure that's how he won his previous two games. Not that I saw them. I was busy playing. Chiteki doesn't win by scoring that often. Okay, he's loading up the face down cards. I'm not going to run those unless I have to. But luckily, I got an infiltration. So I'm going to look at one of them randomly. That's a Ronin. Going to take that out. Run and trash that. Get Ronin out of my face. I'm not going to take that damage. Oh, but the other one was a melange. Oh, I don't know which one would have been worse to leave on the table. Yep. Immediately run and trash the melange. Immediately. Turn starts. Run and trash melange. He's happy. Look how much money he has for a Jinteki. 15, and he hasn't played a Celebrity Gift. He is rich. Man, he can, like, res ice, he can install advance advance, he can res a wall of thorns, he can do all sorts of nasty stuff. So I am going to be careful, and I'm going to somehow and miraculously got all three daily casts this early in the deck. One of them I didn't get to play. Oh, man, if I had played all three, I would have way too much money right now. Man, if I had played all three, I would get six credits at when the turn started. And, wow, yeah, that would be crazy. But look, I'm getting four credits when the, it is still crazy. Four credits when your turn starts and no click spent. You know, I did, had to pay to get those out there in the first place, but I'm still, I'm still profiting. It's a good card, right? Because I want to spend my clicks drawing, right? So. I need to find something that's going to get me get me in there. I want to I want to be able to basically run R&D safely. All right, going to drop my Plascrete. <laughs> Just cuz I know how he rolls. Take credit and throw away my Procon. Yeah, Procon, I think I've said this in other videos. Let me score to Gila Hands. I take a net damage. It's a Parasite. Kind of want that in the trash. Um, all right, against Jinteki again. Okay, one daily cast done. I let him have a Gila Hands, though. He's already rich enough. He's going to be even richer. Ugh. But yeah, pro context, the, the tempo loss, people love the word tempo, right? <laughs> the, you know, you, you really lose the advantage when you spend the five credits to install it, and you don't make the profit back for a while. Here we go, same old thing, clone ship. So he's looking, he's like, what? You the same old thing, and a clone ship. Let me check your trash. Let me check that trash out. What's in the heap, Mr. Same old thing, clone ship? <laughs> Yeah, you lose so much when you spend the five credits. You just create a huge window for the corp to score. Unless you're mega rich already, right? If you're already mega rich, what do you need a pro context for? You've probably already drawn a bunch of cards. Um, you know, I used to love it. I guess if you install it turn one and the corp is slow, then it can help you out a ton. But if the corp is moving right along, you're just setting yourself back and installing that. Um, you know, if you can make it through somehow, if you if you manage to pull through that that window after the five credits and, and get into the profit land, then of course, yeah, the card is huge. It's awesome. Um, okay, this is a pop up window. Cool. He told me it was a pop up window. He wasn't lying. Notice how I only did it once I had three data suckers in case it was a neural katana. Uh, oh, is that another Ronin I just trashed? Sweet. In case that was Neural Katana, I need to have three data suckers, clone ship, parasite in the trash, right? I'm not gonna take three net damage. Then I, I could die if I do that. Okay, so why don't I clone ship that why didn't I clone ship a parasite onto the pop up window? Why did I not do that? Well, because it would cost me a clone ship to do that and have a parasite in my hand. So I'll just install a parasite out of my hand. Phew, done. Problem solved. Am I holding an indexing? 
Oh, he's advancing something, and... Alright, so now he's thrown a card into the trash. That means I'm not going to run archives for data suckers anymore, because I'm pretty sure that's going to be a shock. And it is not worth taking a net damage. Alright, so parasite that pop-up window out of the way. And indexing! The ultimate Jinteki killer, as we saw last game. Yep. Okay, so we got an agenda, a snare. I see the punitive counter-strike, so I'm glad I installed my Plascrete. Uh, and I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Ice on the bottom, right? So you can't ice up R&D for a while. I'll take that agenda. I'll take my net damage. Don't need, uh, I kind of needed that, but that's all right. Um, and then I put the snare second. So that way when he mandatory draws, the snare goes in his hand, right? Yep, one less snare in R&D for me to deal with. Just don't run HQ and don't run any face down cards and remotes. Okay, so now he's going to make a big mistake here, right? He mandatory drew. He drew again. He draws again. There's only one card left, right? Mandatory draw. There was the card I stole, right? And there were four more after that in the indexing. So he mandatory draws and draws three. So he, the whole indexing has been cleared. Every th card that I indexed uh, just entered his hand this turn because he drew, drew, drew. And he's throwing the cards out. And. Yeah, he knows that this is dumb, or he's going to realize how dumb it is in a second. Yeah, it's two shocks, of course, now that we can see. Same old thing indexing. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> he just he knew there was the same old thing there, but he forgot about it at the key moment. Um, pretty similar situation here. Agenda, snare, but then there's three ice. So again, put the snare second to make him draw it. That is mandatory. Run, take the agenda. All right. Oh, I lost a save. I would have loved to have that same old thing. Okay, so I think I've got six points now. And I got a million data sucker tokens. Just need one more agenda. Game's over. He's concentrating on his remote with his advanced thingy. And he's throwing it out. Installing something else. Advancing that instead. Okay. Six to one. You can advance whatever you want. If you get the score to five, maybe I'll pay attention to your obvious remote of death. I'm going to draw cards to not die. Driving more cards to not die. Got an indexing in my hand. I just need to wait for him to draw through. He hasn't drawn through the existing indexing. Okay, corporate war. He wins the corporate war. Man, is he a rich, rich Shinteki. Look how much money he's got. Oh, I lost my fem. But I kind of want that fem in the trash, don't I? Yes, I do. Thank you. Throwing that out. If he'd hit the indexing, it might have been worse. <laughs> okay, so just in case I don't have enough data suckers, you know, I'm going to dirty laundry R and D. He he thinks that I win, <laughs> right? He's like, "Why are you dirty laundering R and D?" Because he knew I was still in the index, right? So he thought maybe I put one of the agendas lower, but I didn't. I was just dirty laundering because I knew it was a safe run. I can get a data sucker and the money, right? Because I know what's there. It's, it's safe. I can remember where I am in the index just to confirm my count is correct. Why not? No other place is a safe server to dirty laundry. All right. Uh, I know the face down card is not a Jackson because he would have Jacksoned my previous indexings, and that card's been there for a long time. Oof, that remote is not a place I will ever be able to go, so I better be able to win this game somewhere else. He's not clearing my virus counters. I got a million data suckers. Alright, draw, draw. 
test run scavenge. Getting that femme that he net so kindly net damaged into the trash, bringing it out on the table, and aiming it at R&D. So now it really, you know, if he clears virus counters or something, it's not going to matter. And also, I can, if he installs say, another sentry or something, I'll be able to deal with that. Uh-oh, he scored again. It's five, I think. Five to five to six. Oof, it's close. It is close now. I've just been letting him score, but I got indexing. It's a pop-up window. Well, the fem didn't matter. I pay one. Indexing, and there is an agenda, so that's game over. Indexing, man. That ruins Jinteki. Did you notice the only net damage I took was from scoring agendas? Uh, and from him scoring agendas? Scoring and stealing was the only net damage. I didn't hit a fetal. I didn't hit a snare. I mean, I get you know, I didn't hit a... Um, I guess there was only one run where I could have hit a snare. I ran R&D once. That wasn't an index. So there was only one chance to be snared the whole game. Um, you just, you gotta protect R&D. You gotta protect it. You can't, you know, you can't protect... R&D, you're, you're going to lose. doesn't matter what faction it is or whatever. So there you have it. So game two, uh, the beginning of game two, you'll see us starting here. Basically what happened in game two is I played my MBN game, as usual. Uh, he has this Reyna deck. I don't know what he was up to. I don't know what his overall strategy is. Um, but basically what happened was I couldn't really defend R&D very well. right? I was able to get a Gila Hands very early. I scored an Astro Script. Um, I think I was able to bounce some things off of San San. He spent a lot of money on uh, traces. There was like a Viper on R&D and on the remote, and there was a Caduceus on HQ. He spent a lot of money going through those traces on purpose. I spent extra credits resing them, obviously. I put an ice wall in front of the remote Viper. He had no way to break that. Uh, did some San San action. I scored some agendas. I was looking for more to score. Um, he ran R&D, took some a little bit. I think he had a breaking news early. Uh, but what happened eventually is he got a keyhole, right? So he's keyholing, and he keyholed hard, right? He, he clearly parasited. Um, actually, I think what happened was R&D had a Draco that was parasited away completely. Then I put a Viper to replace it. That was what happened. And then later on, he fems that Draco. So he's getting into R&D for two, which is still a bit taxing. But he's keyholing, so he doesn't care how taxing it is. And I stupidly put a Draco in front of that uh, R&D Viper. So that he, and I was like, oh, he has a fem. That was stupid. I should have made it strength three. I couldn't afford to. So I just wasted like two credits resing a useless ice. Um to tax him one extra credit per run. I guess that's not the worst, but it wasn't it wasn't really helping me against that keyhole attack. But yeah, he keyholed and then he keyholed he put agendas in the trash with his keyholes. But then he didn't run archives and he says, If you have Jackson, I'm gonna cry like a little girl and yeah, sure, I, I had a Jackson in my hand, I installed it and I you know, as soon as he you know, tried to uh, run archives, well, I'm just gonna Jackson that up. Uh, so his first keyhole swarm didn't work. I had already used one Jackson though, so that was that was actually my second Jackson in the game. Um, so he keyholes hard again. Uh, it drains his money, but he gets. I think there was an asterisk in there, but he again last click he leaves the agendas in the trash and doesn't run there and pick them up. And you know you shuffle up R and D, and I got ridiculously lucky and I top decked that third Jackson uh, rescuing. Uh, his agendas there. Uh, and then, you know, I had an Astro script. Uh, I think I scored another Astro script off the first one or off of Sansa. I had five. Um, and then after some key holding, I top decked a Beal. And I was just like, whoop, Beal, game over. Um, and that was that. So, you know, the, the things to learn from this game that you're not going to watch because the video didn't record the whole game is that if you're key holing, Run archives to pick up the things you keyhold, right? Because even if they have Jackson Howard and they're going to stop you, um, you'll get the, you know, they only have three, right? And even if their luck is ridiculous like mine, you'll, you know, like I, when he, on that first uh, keyhole smash that he used, I didn't have, the Jackson was in my hand, 
right? So I couldn't, if he would have run archives in the fourth click, I couldn't have Jackson that, right? So, you know, you can't, you can't give the corp a chance to rescue those agendas. There's a lot of ways they can do it. Vitruvius counters, I guess there's nothing you can do to stop those, but, you know, archive memories, interns theoretically can get it installed somewhere, right? You, you can't, can't let that happen. Um, yeah, I probably would have lost that game actually if he would have run uh, the archives. Um, so yeah, I won that second game, which means I won this tournament. Woo! Win for me. This is the first time. I mean, this is the second tournament I've won in a row. I don't know if that's because I'm good. Uh, I don't think I'm good. Um, but I do, this is the first time I've won legitimately. I think the last one, I mean, I, I guess I didn't cheat to win either one, but the last one, what happened was there were two players there who were definitely better than me, but their game timed out. Um, and because their game timed out, they were both short a prestige point. And since I swept the last two rounds, uh, I came out ahead. Um, there were also low turnouts uh, at that tournament and also this one, right? So I seem to be good at these smaller tournaments uh with where i get some ridiculous luck the kind of luck you saw in well this the game this game that's being played top decking jacks and top decking you know agendas um also the kind of luck in the previous game where he nerve agented and didn't get my beal right it's just you know when you get lucky and there's only a few rounds that luck matters a ton um you know having those indexings there whatever um but yeah uh, in five rounds, you know, luck matters. The more rounds you play, the less luck matters, and the more your skills matters, right? Because uh, the luck, the randomness will be mitigated by repeat play, right? It's like you could have some deck, and it just, you know, maybe it wins half the time, and half the time it doesn't, it just loses immediately. It's kind of really swingy. Well, in three rounds, you know, you could have, you know, the odds of it being swing the good way three times are pretty good. Um, but in 10 rounds, it's probably going to swing the good way not 10 times. That is that is far less likely, uh, and you won't do well with that. So, um, you know, we'll see. The store championships are Saturday, the first store championship anyway, at the at the Strat. Um, and, you know, that, that should go five rounds, I imagine, if we get a good turnout. So we'll see if, if I'm really uh, as good as the last two tournaments uh, have suggested. Enjoy net running. Look forward to more videos soon.